So you talk about it, the, the algae from the ocean. How is your algae uh, cultivated and harvested? So our algae is cultivated, basically, I'll start with the inputs we need. We need sunlight, a carbon source, and a water source. And so if you were to be standing at our production site, what, what you would see are these vast, shallow ponds um, where we're in, in a sunny place, in a flat, sunny location, um, and our algae is suspended in salty water. And the, we basically mix the algae around in this water, exposed to the sun with a source of carbon, and it uses the carbon, the water, and the energy from sun to photosynthesize and make new algae biomass just as any other plant does. Um, so really, just to kind of summarize, we, we have large, shallow, vigorously mixed ponds in a sunny, flat place. Mm -hmm. And then harvesting, how do, how do you get to that point? So f harvesting for us is just as much um, kind of a complicated challenge as growing the biology of the algae in this kind of environment that's not the ocean. So one of the pieces of the puzzle for us has been developing you know, a sustainable, working harvesting system. And what we do, you know, what we've come to, is basically a, a series of steps. The first step, um, and actually I should, I should go back and say, algae isn't like a crop where we grow it up and then harvest these ponds all at once. Every day, throughout the course of the day, we're harvesting at all times. And in a minute, I'll get into how we're doing that. Um, but we want to pair the rate at which we're harvesting the algae with the speed at which it's growing. So the algae pond as a whole has a similar amount of algae in it at all times. And we're just harvesting what's growing in real time. So having said that, our harvesting method is that at any given time, we're harvesting some percentage of the volume of our production systems. And within that volume is the water. The majority of the mass is the salty water. And then our tiny algae cells suspended in that water. So the first step in our harvesting process is we add a food grade input, a very small amount, which actually makes our separate teeny algae cells clump together. And then gravity does the work for us. Once our algae cells have clumped together, the gravity settles the majority of the algae out of the body of water that we're, that we're treating. Um, it's a safe method, and it actually allows us to pump 90% of that water right back into the ponds to reuse as, as growth medium. So we're actually recycling that water from that stage. Then you know we're down to 10% of the volume, the algae we've concentrated 10x. Um, and then it goes to a mechanical process where we can then further concentrate the algae um, and prepare it for our next step, which is extraction and purification of the oils within. So I had a question from a layperson. When, you, when you're harvesting from outdoor ponds, how do you main, can maintain consistency when you have variables like weather or you know, any possible runoff or things like that? Sure, yeah. So uh, basically, we're in nature. And in order to get to a sustainably produced scale, we, we're kind of in the realm of farming at this point. So one of the disadvantages of our system is we're in nature. Of course, one of the advantages is we're in nature as well. Um, but we basically, we have methods, as you mentioned, runoff. Um, we basically very well understand the, basically, the parameters with which our algae is fine. And we have found a site location or even in the craziest weather or the craziest time of year or even a storm event where we know that the parameter range within which our algae is basically selected for and happier than anything else, we'll, we're not going to go outside of that range. So site selection was very important for us related to those inputs and changes as far as being in nature. And taking that a step further, when, when we're talking about the quality of algae, what type of monitoring and testing do you do along the way to make sure you have consistent results? There's a number of categories, I would say, related to monitoring and testing. Uh, the first of which is, as I mentioned, we need to make sure that the algae has the physical and chemical inputs required for it to grow happily, healthily, and to create the long chain omega-3 fatty acids that we're interested in. Um, so throughout, you know, in real time in all of our production systems, we're measuring those chemical and physical inputs to make sure we're doing our number one job of letting the algae grow in an environment it likes. Um, so things like pH, nutrient ratios, 
um, even strength irradiance from the sun. So lots of different chemical and physical factors are always being monitored. Uh, the second category related to monitoring that I would say is pairing the growth rate of the algae with our harvest rate. So we need to know in real time how much algae is growing and how much has grown between one day and the next. And as you can imagine in nature, someday there's a cloudy day and our growth rate goes down. Other day, it's a, it's a very sunny day and our growth rate's higher. So we need to measure, basically we call it the biomass density. So the amount of algae, if you were to take one liter of culture, separate and dry that algae is kind of the terms we think of. So we're measuring that in real time from all of our production systems and then that informs our harvest rate for that day. Um, a third category is basically making sure that our, the quality of the biomass that we're producing is where we want it. So um, namely EPA content and polar lipid content within the algae that we're growing. It's very important for us to keep it high quality, high EPA content, and the right kind of polar lipids for downstream processing to make our final product. Um, so that's something just through pretty standard but, but complicated um, chemical measurements we, that, that we're making regularly. And then finally, we need to monitor our cultures and make sure that from a safety and contamination standpoint, um, we're not, we don't have anything coming into our system um, that would go out the other end that, that we wouldn't want in there. So those are the four categories of monitoring that, that we are very important to us.